Hello everyone, my name is Pradeep. I'm a development manager at MathWorks. Are you facing challenges in designing a controller to accurately measure the phase currents on the hardware in motor control application? If yes, then in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use SOC block set to identify and resolve controller issues in the simulation phase by adding MCU peripheral synchronization and system delays and then verify the tuned controller on the hardware. SOC block set allows you to create a high fidelity simulation of the closed loop system by taking advantage of new capabilities in 20B release like modeling of ADC and PWM peripherals with accurate real-time behavior, modeling interrupts as tasks including synchronization and scheduling, also provides complete uh, MBD workflow for TIC2000 by enabling a single system model for simulation and targeting and at the end provides a guided deployment workflow using SOC Builder app. I'm using a C2000 uh, Delfino MCU F28370 Launchpad Development Kit to verify the behavior on the hardware. Here we see a Simulink model that represents the motor control closed loop application. This model simulates single CPU motor controller for a permanent magnet synchronous motor inverter system. Controller subsystem highlighted in green color senses the outputs from the plant using ADC interface block and actuates using PWM interface blocks that drives the inverter. Algorithm blocks from motor control block set are used in this example. Task manager block highlighted in green simulates the execution of software tasks as they would be expected to behave on a microcontroller. The ADC interface block highlighted in green color simulates the analog to digital conversion of a hardware board along with start input event message and end of conversion output event message signals. PWM interface block highlighted in green color simulates the PWM output of a hardware board along with an output triggering event which can then be connected to the start port of the ADC interface block to synchronize ADC and PWM events in a closed loop system. As you can see, only two PWM triggering events are used since dual shunt sensing technique is used in the setup to measure the phase currents. Now let's talk about typical design challenges associated with MCU peripherals and scheduling. Incorporating sensor delays to achieve the desired controller response for the closed loop system. For example, ADC acquisition time impact on the controller response. Synchronizing ADC and PWM peripherals to achieve current sensing at midpoint of PWM period. Simulating the PWM at uh, switching level with uh, nanosecond dead time value. Single model for simulation and deployment. Now let's look at the first design challenge effect of ADC acquisition time on controller response. To ensure complete ADC measurement, the minimum acquisition time must be selected to account for the combined effects of input circuit and the capacitor in the sample and hold circuit. Now let's see the impact of low acquisition time on the controller response. On the ADC interface block, change the default acquisition time to 100 nanosecond. Then run the simulation and open the STI for viewing the phase currents and speed feedback. In this figure, you can see that the simulated speed feedback shows significant oscillations during open loop to closed loop transition, which in real world will halt the motor. This is due to a distortion in uh, current waveforms. The low acquisition time resulted in ADC measurements not reaching their true value. As a result, the controller reacts by generating a relativity cycle causing variations in current drawn by the motor. To fix this issue, change the acquisition time to a larger value, say 320 nanosecond. This value is the minimum ADC acquisition time recommended for TI Delfino 790 launchpad. Again, run the simulation and view the results in STI. In this figure, you can see the accurately sampled ADC values and the controller tracking the reference value as expected. Now we have used the simulation models to adjust ADC parameter. Let's proceed with uh, programming the TI launchpad board to verify these settings with a hardware test. On the system on chip tab, click configure build and deploy button to open the SOC builder tool. Follow the instructions on the SOC builder tool to run the model in external mode. Once the external mode simulation is completed, open SDI to view the results. In this figure, you can see the data from hardware 
with accurately sampled ADC values and the controller tracking the reference value as expected. Now let's talk about the second design challenge that is synchronization between PWM command and ADC conversion. In this figure, you can see the low side shunt resistor circuit in TRV8305 motor driver board. The current only flows through the shunt when the bottom switches are on and away from PWM commutation noise. So for correct operation, current sensing must occur during the midpoint of the PWM period when ADCs trigger. Specifically, the PWM counter must be at the maximum value when the bottom switches are active in the up-down counter mode. After ADC start of conversion is triggered, there will be a delay due to acquisition and conversion before end of conversion event gets triggered. The current sampling at a different instance results in a measured phase currents of zero. Now let's see an error case where current is sampled at the wrong instance and observe that the controller responds by running the simulation. In the PWM interface block, set event trigger mode to end of PWM period. Again, run the simulation and uh, view the results in STI. In this figure, you can see that the phase A and phase B currents are approximately zero. This results in a loss of feedback and no actuation in the control loop. If the same test is done on hardware, you might end up damaging the inverter circuit. To fix this issue, change the event trigger mode to midpoint of PWM period, equivalent to the PWM internal counter being at a maximum in up-down counter mode. Now run the simulation again and view the results in STI. In this figure, you can see that the ADC interrupt occurs during PWM for bottom switch is on and non-zero phase A and phase B currents. Now we have used the simulation models to adjust PWM parameters. Let's proceed with the programming the TI Launchpad board to verify these settings with a hardware test. Before deploying the model, set the PWM event condition to counter equals to period on peripheral configuration app in the SOC Builder tool. Follow the instructions on the SOC Builder tool to run the model in external mode and view the results in STI. In this figure, you can see that the data from simulation and hardware with correct ADC PWM synchronization and the controller tracking the reference value as expected. So to summarize, you can easily identify and fix the design problems in motor control application early in the development phase using new capabilities in SOC block set like modeling of ADC and PWM peripherals, modeling of uh, interrupts as uh, tasks, complete MBD workflow for uh, TIC 2000 board. Thank you so much for watching. To try the example, please visit the link mentioned in the video description.